So I started out with storytelling where I would have them close their eyes and imagine they could see their heart and they would write and then they would draw with their eyes closed and open and write stories about it. And so it started out as a process where no one was worried about whether it was art or not because they had these little set of directions. I mean, the biggest problem in working with people that don't think of themselves as artists is they think they have to make art, whatever that is. My name is Jane Gilmore. I am an artist living in the New Bow neighborhood of Cedar Rapids, Iowa for the last 30 years. In the 70s and, and 80s, and really throughout my career, but more so in the 70s and 80s, my work was really concerned with um, the position of women in the arts and the idea um, that women had creative power uh, experiences that uh, experiences of the construction of gender in other words that that culture sort of constructs what female and male mean and that the, there's these boundaries and how to push those around a little bit and how to so I was an activist in the sense of that they were like no women artists having one person shows I had one woman professor at Iowa in graduate school you didn't really have many art artists period here and my grandmother lived in Cedar Rapids in this neighborhood because she was part Czech. And then I found CSPS across the hall. It was an old social club. And I saw a sign outside that said, the gymnasts have moved. <laughs> and so I asked the landlord if, if I could have a studio there. And he said, sure, how much are you paying now? And I said, well, $150. And he, he said, OK. And he gave me the whole upstairs. <laughs> so then I invited John and Mel to come down and they started uh, Legion Arts there. So that was probably 89 when I first uh, r really started to try to work with other people to do something in the neighborhood. But in the mid 80s, this Cherry Building was owned, was purchased by Bob Chatham, whose son was an artist and he really wanted to have artists in the building. So he asked me to contact other artists, which I did. So by the mid 80s, there were a couple of artists in this building too. As soon as I got larger spaces like this, I was able to work at a scale that allowed me to do these big public installations and work in parks. And so my work got lots bigger and uh, lots more interested in, I think, coming out of education more interested in working with groups of people. I mean, I try to be transdisciplinary, so I'd work with social workers and other, I mean, I got my foot in the door by meeting these people. And through Mount Mercy, which had women's shelters and so forth, I was able to connect. After I entered my cat in the All-American Glamour Kitty pageant, I did, a, I did a picture for the cover of the catalog, and it was me in this cheap French cat mask holding my cat. And I loved the image, it was like this great, feline goddess alter ego and that was just what we were all talking about in the 70s so so um the female archetype as an archetype is a strong creative force you know and, and of course women there were george o'keefe was the only woman in an art history book and so this was a time of <laughs> working towards a little more egalitarian approach to art history so i have donned the cat mask and again taking students on a couple of trips one to greece we we put on togas and looked at Isidore Duncan and created these kind of dance resurrections where we, where we took over the Parthenon and a few patriarchal sites that at the time you could walk on, <laughs> now you can't. But, but from that cat mess and that experience and that collaboration with my students, I think I, I really learned a lot about, about collective work. And, I think it's just crucial if you're an artist outside of a major center that you have other people you respect, artists, patrons of the arts, you know, just people that are interested in the arts in a broader term, music, poetry, uh, reading, anything. Um, have those people around because they, you feed off each other. and. We've done, Mel and Dringa and David and I, we've done many projects together over 40 years, so many. And, uh, and I learned so much from them about using projections and just ideas, you know, everybody has their own. I mean, it's, it's good to have artists around you whose, whose minds you respect, whose creative process you respect, and who themselves respect process rather than product. Like, my art's all about a process and the product 
hopefully is interesting and reflects the process. So the, but I just don't know where I would be without my friends in this neighborhood. And, and also it brings people together to do things.